Carly, I got the big one. Yeah, I, got <laughs> I have a lot of paper, so it probably is. <laughs> it's like the contrast that the largest that you've ever seen and the smallest. Well, well except, <laughs> except that. Oh, This uh, board work session to order. Uh, Marjorie, you bet. Well, as uh, as you well know, when we passed the bond issue in September of uh, 2018, not only did we have to worry about building facilities, but we have to worry about redoing boundaries. And we've talked about that for about 14 months now. And, uh, we've talked about a process. We talked. Uh, specifically about that process at our summer retreat and we talked about how we would come back to you in December with uh, our update. Well, it's December already. <laughs> so here we are and I'm going to turn it over to Doug Morrison to talk about the process that we're looking at for the redoing the boundaries. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so we have a brief presentation to kind of go through here. We'll kind of go through the timeline and some processes and kind of how we see things laying out over the next, uh, you know, really six or seven months and, and really even longer than that. So I'm going to start with the timeline. So what we have here is what I call the July to December time frame that we're sort of in here now. It's I, I call it the incubator phase uh, to some extent, but uh, the first item on there, the background work by district staff to create new boundary scenarios for elementary, middle, and high school. Um, we've been working on that for since, uh, look, since August, uh, since August 27th, actually. We have a, a group of us in the district that have been working to create some scenarios, uh, possible scenarios of boundaries, um, mainly from the standpoint that when we get to the boundary committee, we have to have a starting point, um, you know, to be able to start from, to get input from. So, um, and so we have had some tools that we've been working with on that. Uh, we have a software uh, platform that we use for other things in the district called Tableau. Um, and so I've got my group back here, um, Renee and Nicole and Austin, been really integral part of the team at um, pulling together uh, and allowing us to have sort of a, what I call a sandbox to basically take 25,000 pens, if you think about it, put it on a map, and then to be able to draw, you know, boundaries around it, be able to count what's in there, move options around to try to balance things out. And so that's just been a very um, significant process for us um, and something that most districts would probably pay tens of thousands of dollars to have done by a consultant these guys are doing uh, and so we have that expertise in those tools right here in the district which is which has been great um, we've been also able to take those and then create some tools from that so think about if you're a parent and you're trying to deal with you know three four different options for middle school or high school how does that impact me so we've been able to take that and create some online tools that will allow parents to go in and put their address in and see where they fall under the different options or view the different options for whether it's middle school, high school. Um, so those are very you know, significant uh, things that are sort of going on in the background uh, that we'll have up and going um, by the uh, time the task force meets in, in uh, mid-January. Um, so the other 
the next item on there is really ramp up and programming stra strategy alternatives. So um, when you do boundaries, you have to give consideration to other things like where you're going to put your specialty schools. So think of the honors program in middle school or, you know, the Spanish program. You have to make room for those in, in schools. And so those are considerations that you have to that you have to make or rise programs and stuff. So all that type of stuff is being sort of considered um, in preparation for the, the boundary committee that will start in January. Conducting small, friendly focus groups. So um, a good example of that would be that we met with uh, a group of former uh, board members and other people that were had significant roles in the district at the time, the last boundaries that were done. And so that was good feedback um, for us as to lessons they learned and uh, things that they used during the process to, to uh, get themselves through, through that. Um, establish guidelines, which we'll cover here in a little bit. Uh, assemble the boundary committee of community members, and I'll cover that as well, and then hire a facilitator. So that's kind of what's been going on um, in the background here leading up to the first set of uh, boundary committee meetings. Um, so January through March, uh, as, as I talked about, the boundary committee meetings will start. Uh, and then on the heels of that, uh, there'll be a series of uh, public feedback sessions. So there's five of those scheduled. They'll be at each middle school open to the public. And so uh, we've got dates for those as well. Um, what we're thinking about is in April, there'll be an initial recommendation to the board um, uh, for as far as boundaries, taking all that feedback, uh, presenting you guys with an option or options, uh, and then really giving you guys enough time to deliberate over those, uh, to study, deliberate it. There may be other things that you guys want to see, feedback that you've been receiving. Can we do this? Can we do that? So, you know, trying to give you guys uh, as a board plenty of time to get comfortable with the options that have been presented, make sure you've heard the feedback, and then ultimately what we're uh, thinking in the June time frame is that we uh, finalize uh, those boundaries um, and, and then also where different programming is going to be and, a, and, a, and also a ramp up strategy. So will seniors go here, will juniors, will siblings, all of that type of uh, stuff. Uh, also, those decisions have to be uh, made as well. And then ultimately, the, the vote. Um, so then after the vote's made and the boundaries are sort of determined, um, July through December that year really is, is educating the community, right? Here's what the boundaries mean to you as a parent. Um, what your situation is with your kids, um, you know, notifications, that whole process, um, and then leading up to sort of December of 2020 where we have our normal open enrollment sign-up process for people that want to uh, opt out of their current you know, choice to at least request open enrollment, and then we have to decide the extent that we can meet those. And then August 2021, New schools open and uh, attendance boundaries go live. Um, <clears throat> task force selection. So November 21st to 27th, we took applications. Um, <laughs> great work. We had a tremendous response to people that wanted to be on the task force, 160. 161 people that wanted to be on the task force. That's what all these pens represent. Um, and so we had great distribution across the community, so it wasn't all maybe clumped in one area. And so uh, then we went um, through them and, and did a random process of selecting people. Um, and actually, um, that turned out to be these yellow items, and we still had pretty good uh, disbursement of uh, community. So we tried to make it as fair as we could. Um, and then we have a few spots that were open for people that we needed to contribute, like maybe somebody from the city planning department, uh, uh, folks like that, that we uh, thought we needed to have as part of the task force. And so um, today, applicants were notified um, that, um, to be, that they were selected for the task force and they're given sort of one last chance to say yay or nay. Um, and uh, that's so uh, the ends looking to get those back by December 9th. So I think we're in pretty good shape on that. 
Um, so if you think about the char your the school district boundary committee charge, so once the committee's formed, um, you can almost think just like with the bond referendum, uh, the first thing that, uh, the first sort of item of action at the task force meeting, uh, boundary committee meeting, um, is to, for the board, for you to give the charge to uh, the boundary committee. And so really saying, what are, what do we want from you? And so we've outlined this, uh, what we believe to be, uh, you know, an encompassing statement of what you would like them to do. Um, so it just says that the Sioux Falls School District is, has formed a boundary committee for the purpose of establishing primarily new middle school and high school attendance boundaries that provide an optimal learning environment for all students with the addition of Thomas Jefferson High School and Ben Rifle Middle School set to open in fall of 2021. And then their charge is really to develop recommendations on new high school and uh, middle school uh, boundaries. And I say recommendations because I, I think that it's important that the charge you give them is to come up with some recommendations and not give you one option that you are, that maybe the committee is split on and, and pass off to you. So it's a series of realistic, um, really consideration or options that we can take forward to the community for input. Um, and then also to provide you some guidance on student transition. So what's their feeling on whether, um, again, seniors um, won't be required to go to their, they can stay where they're at. Juniors will have to, so, you know, it's, it's sort of working through all those things, what happens with um, siblings, uh, open enrollment and all that type of stuff. So again, just to give you some guidance, um, you know, recommendations on that. Mm -hmm. Assumptions, uh, Thomas Jefferson to be open in fall of 2021, then Rifle 2021. And then um, <coughs> elementary school boundaries, not part of the charge. It's really not what, what they're what having them uh, do. <coughs> and then the boundary committee guidelines, uh, you can see there, there's some different priority areas and things that we want them to consider. Um, things like quality of education and about, um, you know, sort of looking at the socioeconomic status uh, amongst the schools like we've tried to do now with our, our schools. Uh, student safety, well-being, and budget considerations. So those things we want them to consider as well. <clears throat> Natural borders as far as boundary lines. Um, and then trying to, looking to accommodate future future uh, growth and change. So I think the guideline in the past has always been to try to create uh, boundaries that are would be in existence for at least five years, uh, not so we wouldn't have to be in this situation again in two or three years. So that's, that's a, another goal. So this would be the charge that you would give to the committee opening night of the, the uh, boundary committee uh, meetings, and then they can take that and, and move forward. Um, referred to hiring the facilitator. So, um, as you all know, with the bond, re bond referendum process, we hired uh, Joe Donovan of the jo Donovan Group. And so um, I think that went over really well. And so we approached Joe again about doing this for uh, the boundary committee um, and also the public input sessions. And so he's agreed to, uh, to be our facilitator for that. And I think it's a lot better to have him in there so you guys can sit back and just take notes and, and you know gather information rather than trying to be up there one of you facilitating the meeting. Um, and so I think Joe has the ability to just you know take feedback um, and say we hear you, we're gonna put it you know over here and con for consideration and I think it, it really helps to have a facilitator where we can all sit back and sort of be observers or um, answer questions if we have to. So the task force meetings, uh, we determined early on. So when we went out to people to see if you wanted to be on the task force, um, that we, uh, we told them ahead of time when the meeting uh, commitments were that they had to work around. So uh, there'll be three of them, um, Monday, January 20th, Wednesday, the 29th, and then Wednesday, February 19th. Um, 
and we'll try to get through them in two hours, but that's the commitment that they all have signed up for. Um, and when they when they signed up, they knew ahead of time what those dates are, so we didn't have to get everyone together and come up with those dates. Um, so this isn't set in stone, but this is sort of we're we're starting to sort of synthesize what a what the meetings might look like as far as the content of the meetings. So um, meeting one, welcome and introductions, because there'll be about thirty folks there, right? Um, uh, the formal charge, which we just talked about from you guys to uh, the Boundary Committee. Um, give them some general background from the bond referendum. Um, review of current school boundaries, so we'll just kind of give them a view of how everything looks today. Um, and then we'll start to provide them with some, uh, some alternatives that have been developed by the district staff and our team to say, based on everything we know, trying to balance school capacities, demographics, um, and all those other things and considerations, here are some options that we see and uh, present those to them and then <clears throat> get them to discuss those. And then if they wanna see an alternative, um, we can take that and create those for the next meeting uh, for them to consider. If they wanted to see this little pocket move from Patrick Henry to Edison or whatever it is, right? That we have the ability to do that and present it to them next time. The next time. So meeting two would be review of the alternatives that were that came from the other the last meeting, and then we would get into the high school boundary alternatives. And uh, same thing, we would have some alternatives that we we had come up with as a as a district to say. Here's one view of how you might think of boundaries looking. And then same thing, they can discuss them, they can give them, say, you know, move this around, move that around, and then come back and present those at the next meeting. Um, and then at the meeting three, we will also start to have some, get their input as far as the whole transition of what they think is fair as far as requiring students to, you know, who, you know, can siblings stay where they're at, can seniors, juniors, sophomores, all those types of things, sixth graders, whatever it is, this scenario. Um, discussion of the different alternatives and then ultimately, hopefully coming up with a recommendation of alternatives that they would like to see going forward to um, what I would really say at this point, the way the process works is to the community for consideration. Um, just to, because then, then we'll be going to those five meeting, community meetings with some options. So those will be the five community input sessions. Uh, we have it at each middle school, which is try to get the geographic um, representation. Um, they're scheduled for 5.30 to 6.30. Uh, my gut sense is they'll go longer than that. I think, you know, these boundaries are gonna impact a lot of people. So I think we'll have a lot of interest and I think we'll, Joe will try to facilitate it as best he can, but we don't want to cut anybody off either and not make them feel that they're not heard. So, I mean, we're just going to have to go into the first meeting and see what kind of a crowd we get, how long it takes, and kind of adjust the other meetings from there. But those are the start times and the, the dates. And so we've been, you know, come up with those again ahead of time so we can get those out in the community so people know ahead of time. They can put them on their calendar. Um, and by this time, they should know, based on, like I was referring to the tools we have, they'll know what options are going forward for community input, and they'll also have the ability to go in and see what that means to them personally about where their home resides under any of those different options, um, which, will be, which will, be, will be great. <clears throat> and then, um, just like with the boundary, um, process Deanne and her team will will we have a website that will be very transparent so all the meetings that we have there'll be minutes uh, there'll be you know all the tools that I was talking about that, that those that the teams created you know as far as being able to look at the different alternatives FAQs uh, all those types of things but then additionally input is so uh, important to us and we know that there may be people that can't get to the, the different boundary meetings or have questions of busing, you name it, right? It, it's gonna be, and so we, um, this this uh, fall, 
started to pilot a tool called Let's Talk, uh, which is a communication, allows parents to go in and essentially ask questions to us. And then based on the type of question, we can route them to whoever the subject matter expert is um, to be able to answer. And it also tracks them, ages them. So we know that we're getting back to everybody and that everybody's questions being addressed. And we'll be allowed to categorize them by different themes and if we see a lot of questions about a certain thing we can then maybe develop an FAQ and put it out there so people don't you know they, they know that it's been addressed so um, so we're excited about um, that tool it's been a tool we used a long time ago but we've resurrected it for this purpose and so we just think it's gonna be a great way for people to, to go in and communicate with us and ask any question um, you know, and again, people sometimes just don't like to get up in the crowd and ask a question. This allows open input from anybody. And it also will allow us to capture those and summarize it and give it to you to say, here's the types of questions that um, people are asking. Okay. So, so that's kind of the process. It's exciting. There's a lot going on. I, I can't emphasize enough the, the team back there. Um, like I said, we would be spending tens of thousands of dollars on uh, consultants and, and these guys have really stepped up in being able to do anything from online maps to big maps to allowing uh, Todd and I to look at some boundary scenarios and uh, I don't think anything we've asked them Todd that they haven't been able to figure out right, right? so <laughs> um, so that's great it's great that we have that expertise uh, in our in our district and so they're the unsung heroes that somehow magically make this stuff happen behind the scenes. So. Thank you, Doug and Deanne and Austin and Nicole and Renee for all that information. It's quite helpful. I just have a couple questions yeah. about, well, I, I think I've seen on social media all the dates for the task force as well as the committee meetings. Are they on our district website already as well? Or? Okay, approved, perfect. So they will be on there for the public for yeah. them to access after today's meeting. And then for, I was wondering about when we, when the recommendations are made by the task force committee, when we have the community meetings, as well as on the website, it'd be great to have technology available so people could type in, type in their address even, and just know it, when they go to that meeting, or we could type it in for them at that meeting, or yep. could do it at the website sure. to figure out their new boundaries if possible. That'd yep. be helpful. Yeah, it's pretty intuitive. Even I can find my home okay, under, so under five different scenarios or whatever techie, we were so playing it, around with. <laughs> like, oh, wow, there it is. It works. So yeah. it's really cool. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's good. We want everyone to feel heard and that, and that we've addressed them, uh, their questions. And, uh, you know, that's the key through all this is to try to provide as much transparency as, as, as we can because when you're, you know, there's going to be a lot of people impacted when you add a new middle school and then you have to redistribute everything. Um, but we got, we got great schools and like I said, it's just, it's just, uh, it's going to be a good, a good process as we move through it. So. And I think the other question people might have is why elementary boundaries are not being discussed at this point and it's because our new elementary school, we have not started, picked a location yet. You know, yeah. that under the old bond task force, they said by 2024, I believe. And so since they will change again at that point, we thought it probably wasn't prudent to change them and do that again in yeah. three years. So. And, there, and there could be a, a few, I call them tweaks to elementary boundaries if, if if you believe in the concept that, uh, you know, you, as much as possible you want certain elementary schools to feed middle schools, mm -hmm. there, it's possible there could be a, you know, pocket that moves from, you know, from this elementary school to this elementary school. We don't envision it to be huge, but there could be some isolated incidents, incidents like that. So um, we kind of see how that plays out. I think one thing I, that kind of, um, created a little light bulb for me was the um, just thinking about open enrollment for 2020. Um, I think, you know, having just gone through open enrollment here and hearing from um, some parents, I don't know if we would think about a different process 
for open enrollment, perhaps an online process so that people aren't camping out for a day. Um, so I think that I'd like us to maybe talk about that in the coming year or two. Um, just in anticipation of the fact that come <laughs> December of 2020, it will probably ramp up those people that apply for open enrollment. So um, just something I'd like us to consider and talk about further down the road. In fact, Carly and I have our agenda planning to talk about it yesterday. Same issue, so that yeah, we, I think that we do need to explore what other alternatives there are. It would say it would save Bert too. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they might not have computer, but I'm willing to bet they have. You could probably use I mean, the same argument with there were many people who had to work, you know, and their jobs didn't allow them to come up with their team. I think there's not going to be a perfect scenario that we can fit for everybody, and so finding something that maybe just works better than what we have right now, I don't know what that is. In, back to your original uh, concern, Kate, when uh, Carly and Cynthia brought that up to me yesterday, and geez, well, how could we make it better? I don't know that that answer is intuitive. But I think the concept of looking at it and saying, is can we build a better mousetrap? I think that makes a lot of sense. So mm -hmm. it will be on our senior leadership team agenda to start that conversation to see and maybe we can maybe we can. Maybe it's the best possible scenario already. I hope hope maybe we can do something better. But I know it's been a long time since we've looked at it. So it makes sense not only because of this process, but also because of the length of time since we've addressed that issue. Yeah, prior to this one, it makes sense to have that conversation again. Um, I know you said that the um, meeting structure is all tentative, so I mm -hmm. don't want to get in the weeds, but I look at like the topics and I think about that's a lot of information covering two hours times three. And so I think that's maybe what's giving me the most heartburn right now is what happens if that first meeting, we spend a lot of time talking about introducing each other and the charge and the background and then all of a sudden we didn't really get to you know what I mean so I don't know if we yeah if we can get stuff ahead of time um, or have yeah. a catch-up meeting just in case yeah yeah we can start to develop a, we can socialize a you know a, a fourth meeting date if needed type thing or ask people to be willing to stay for an hour post the time that's scheduled just since you already have everybody there if they were you know what I mean like yeah. I think finding another date for 30 people will be challenging but yeah. asking them up front to be flexible with that end time and knowing it will never go longer than an hour past that or just something because I feel like oh that's a lot because yeah. I think the bond meetings were three hours long right and just how many did you have of those so I know it's not the same topic but I feel like this one might even be more emotional for people and you might get people who just feel like they need to be heard um, and so I would hate to feel like they walked out feeling like they didn't get a chance to say something because we ran out of time. Otherwise, I think I think the structure looks really good. I like the process that we have gone through, giving people plenty of time to attend and really encouraging people to attend. I know the one question that I had asked you was, we had always said we we're going to follow what we did for the bond, and in the bond we kind of did it opposite, where we met or we had community input meetings first. And then the committee met and they took all of those things and said, this is what we heard from the community. And so I'll give you another opportunity to explain why we maybe reverse that this time in this process. I think one of the big reasons is we are, we're going to ask the task force to come up with recommendations versus the previous task force that came up with a recommendation. And so I think uh, what uh, we'll do with those recommendations then is take those out to the community at large and then bring a, a number of recommendations to the board. So you're not put in a box by, by anything and you'll have uh, access to all the information that took place during the task force, plus all the feedback that you get from the five community meetings. And then you'll have some time, and that'll be good and bad, but then you'll have some time to, to really uh, vet all of the information that you have to come to some final conclusion. That's the, probably the biggest reason. 
and then I just wanted to verify, similar to the um, bond task force, where we had them kind of set up on that side of the room. There were many chairs set up, and the public was welcome to, those weren't televised or anything, but the, it was an open door, and the public was welcome to come and sit, not necessarily participate. Um, and that will be the same for these three public meetings, our three community. Well, you were correct. Those, will be, those are public meetings. Anybody can come and observe those meetings. And we actually had a time at the uh, during the bond task force for public input as well. So if you didn't get a letter or a notification in the mail today and come, you can still come, <laughs> listen, and you know yeah. get that same yeah. information and be able to ask questions. You know, Carly, I think that's a really good point to reiterate. There are a lot of opportunities for involvement here. Uh, hopefully, this is set up so that if if you didn't. If you weren't involved in the end, then that falls on you because we're going to have three public meetings that are the task force. And certainly the task, the members of the task force will be central to those meetings. But all of the information is public and the participation at the end is, is public. Conversation with task force members or board members and employees in between meetings uh, are options for everybody as well. Once the task force does their work, there are five community meetings for everybody to participate in. So, and, and then there's a good period of time between the last community meeting and the time that you'll take a vote as a board. So there really is a lot of opportunity for, for the public to enter in to what the final solution will be. So I think that's a, that needs to be really highlighted is, is I think a strength of this process. Might make it messy at times, but I think it'll be a real strength of this process. Well, I'll, I'll give my thanks to, to Deanne and Doug and et al. There are a whole lot of people involved with this. Um, next, we'll go to the bond implementation and here to speak on that topic is no stranger to this group, and that is uh, Jeff Credit. I'm gonna go fairly quick. Um, this is very similar to what you saw in, in July. There has a, there's been some changes, but uh, majority of things, I tried to think of what I was gonna say in a deep, deep breath on this one um, after July. But uh, what we'll do is we'll probably bring these back just like this and you'll just keep seeing more pieces of this added to it as we um, build. But uh, kind of the same format, a lot of the same sheets, and I'll kind of go over uh, what what I changed and what we're, what we're doing. Uh, if you go to page two, I'm not gonna go through every one of these. So this is that the spreadsheet that uh, we put together with the CIP, and it, it lists all the buildings with the preventive maintenance and the, the bond information. So you, Got all the buildings with the kind of the projected preventive maintenance and those sort of things. You can see the what's supposed to be highlighted, the, the first two, the CIP plan and the schedule with, with the CIP plan or, or the projects that we're gonna try to schedule with them and some of the other PM projects that kind of fell within this. And what I tried to do was outline, and they're in red, is a, what you're gonna start seeing in the upcoming capital budget you probably saw some of them in last year's or this current year's budget, but what we're proposing to, to run forward into the next capital. So most of these, the the bond stuff is fixed, so we're not moving anything on the bonds. That's gonna stay um, stagnant, but it's the things that we're gonna roll into the projects when they time for a little efficiencies. Some of them won't, some will be outside of it, but most of them will be rolled into it and you'll see that, and I've tried to put in what budget year um, they are. And I'm not gonna go way ahead of it, it's just that if they're in a current budget year or a next year's, then I'll put the two or three years if it's a three-year budget process or not. So you can kind of see, you know, like uh, Washington, we're gonna do the cooling tower. That was listed under there. It's not gonna be an NACIP, it's gonna be just a separate project. But as you go down and you'll start seeing um, some, of, some of Lincoln High Schools that were listed, um, and we've kind of met with them, and uh, that will be coming up. 
we'll be planning for that next um, after July. So we just had a little piece to do a survey over there, and we we have that completed. But we'll start planning that portion in July. Uh, trying to get to one. Um, there, let's see. You, you, some of these projects are just going to be. They're just like just capital outlay O and M projects. So come through the process. But if you look at Cleveland, uh, Cleveland is a prime example. We, we're planning on doing quite a bit, schedule them with uh, with the CIP. Um, and so you'll see those listed in red, and that's going to be through 20, 20, 21, 21, 22 budget years. So I kind of show, tried to show you that, and those are what we're trying to do. And you'll see a group of those come through part of it we're trying to balance it because that's going to be a two summer project so we're going to try to balance that within the appropriate budget we're going to get into. Um, re roughing that's going to be a two phase some of it's going to be in the CIP some of it's not we broke out um, the main roof is scheduled to be done this summer and that's in the current budget year and next budget year that we break it in two but we're going to re-roof the upper part of the roof, but not the lower part where we're going to be doing window replacements and glass box replacements. We'll do that after that step. So we try to break that in where it makes sense. So those are kind of some of the things you're, you'll see in this, in this book, this process. And then up to page 12, you'll see that. Robert Frost, we're going to, we're going to try to construct that 4th Avenue drop-off um, area in front of the school when we're, we have the, that whole thing tore up. So, and then we're going to also incorporate a new air conditioning unit. Um, that's at the end of its life, and we have to, instead of putting a little small unit somewhere, we're going to incorporate it, the tonnage into that unit and schedule that accordingly. So, trying to make the most efficient use of the dollars that we have in the district. Forest man, also some renovations, some rip repairs. We did a lot of rip repairs there, or rip replacements, except for where we're tying in. We did that this summer, so they're pretty much somewhat completed. Uh, so you'll, you'll see some of that, and we're trying to look ahead and make sure we don't do something that we would do. So Laura Wilder is another one that we'll be looking at um, integrating some of those in the, uh, this budget year, because that's going to be budgeted. So uh, you can kind of go down through that list and uh, see what some of those are. And that kind of... Um, is, is that first group of projects. And you'll, you'll kind of see that. Most of them, as, as we get done, you'll move to the completed, underway, or incompleted. So I think you see in the first one where, where we had land bought, we moved that to the completed and those sort of things. So try to give you an update. Um, page 12, this is the overall plan of CIP. So you can kind of look at where the fiscal year is, what the inflation numbers we, we built into those our initial estimates, and you'll see that and where they roll up. And I think you saw that last time. Nothing's changed on that particular one. Okay. Uh, page 16 is that red line. That'll be the red line. We'll kind of track, and uh, you can kind of make sure I'm on task with this red line. Um, we're we're just in front of the red line on in December. See that we got October, November, December, and January, February. I've got them in quarters, and we are in the process. Robert Frost in the, in the design process. Worst man is Laura Wilder. Um, we've we've had meetings with the buildings already. Um, we're scheduled next week for Forest Man's or Laura Wilder's final one, um, and so. Starting in January, February, March will be the bidding process for these this first group of projects, and they're they're all on um, schedule for that. After the first of the year, we're going to start uh, the planning and design work on Cleveland. That won't be bid till next fall. Probably we want to get that out because that's a big one. So maybe in December before anything starts um, for the spring, we want to be one of the first ones out, not one of the last ones. Out. And then by that time, you'll start seeing the high schools and middle schools, some of those subcontractors being opened and start coming off that project. So they'll, they'll be a little hungry for, for those, that project. 
So we're on we're on track with uh, those three CIP projects, and then Cleveland will start up. Um, JFK will start up um, also next uh, fiscal year, and the design we we did that architectural selection and have them on board for that as well. So we're kind of trying to work a little bit ahead, um, but stay within the the budget and the, the cycle that we have uh, set up for that. And there is one project, if you see the reds when it anticipated completion, the memorial on that one is, is done. So, so we hit our first mark. Okay, then the next on page 18, um, this is a real detailed list of all the, all the items, um, how we expenditure. So the top part is the funding, then all the expenditures are kind of um, on the on the left side, and the red is kind of anticipated. It's not finalized. The, the black is where we have firm numbers um, associated with that. And uh, this one actually shows the, uh, if you look um, right down before this CO, those are change orders, 5% owner contingency. I've got that kind of right in the middle there. That's not added up to the totals, but it, it does add up um, in the funding. And, that is accounted for in the difference of that number when you see the difference. That's funding versus all the um, amounts that we spent or, in, or anticipate spending. So the reds are anticipated spending and um, so forth. So um, some of the highlights, uh, we are uh, project testing. We have a number for that, but that's a, a unit price so as Hopefully that will come in under that, so it's not a firm number, because it's based on soil testing. If, if things go, you know, that you need more testing, you have to do those testing. Um, we are right now working on cameras, um, security buttons, card readers, uh, phone systems. So we'll be going out here in the next month or two to get firm numbers on those. So you'll start seeing some of those crop up and come through as purchase orders or some type of orders as we go through, then they'll turn into black when they have a firm number. So we're putting together the drawings for that right now. So we're pretty close to being done. And then we get into the furnishing and equipment and uh, um, we're, we're meeting with some vendors um, in mid mid-December to try to put some uh, sample rooms together at Washington High School so we can kind of test some of them before we um, purchase them. So then we'll start putting those in there. I mean, just remember, I mean, this one, the high school right now is so 5.6. That number grew from the board meeting once I plugged in and then we reduce some of the fees and the architect's fees and all that because it all, all kind of compounds and that's, that puts into these formulas. So. Um, so that's that's actually good news, and if we get better, we'll plug in the right numbers and see where we're at. But like I said, furniture there's a uh, that includes all the computers, all the network drops, all the wireless access points. I we just laid those out. There are about 150 wireless access points so that we'll be doing. And uh, owner contingency. I already got a couple items I want to run by you guys, and uh, the floor finishes that. Uh, up up in the science rooms will make the noise a little better from the second to the that's been a concern they had concrete so we're we're getting numbers now to put some tile floor in this science room so yeah so little things like that i mean nothing major but just the smaller things and another one is um that i plugged in for in the capital budget is and we'll we'll have that decision as we balance that is do sidewalks at CTE? Do we do we link the CTE one into the project? Right now, it goes right to the corner, but there is probably quite a bit of sidewalk that needs to be done to get to CTE. To do that. So, those are the things we'll have to discuss as we move forward. And then memorial. That's um, I just have to get the final final billings and reimbursements from the architects, and that will be done. And that's that too is about two hundred and ninety thousand to the good. And then uh, turn to page twenty is Ben Rifle. Um, then you can see we 
I think on, in July we had that $200,000 buffer yard and city thing that we knew was coming and that came through so that actually was 199 so we, we projected that was a pretty good estimate so that came through and that so that turned uh, turned black and uh, we're right now at 5.8 uh, million to the good on, on that one but if you take the inflation we had to make up for the project it gets to about the two something so um, so we're, we're well on our way with both of those furnishings uh, as far as uh, the cameras the, the wireless access points and those sort of things we're putting those together and we should have numbers for those we're working on those simultaneous to that and uh, signage and all that we're pretty close to having that all ready to go get some numbers so those will start peeling away and then we'll be working on furniture over the summer and get those ordered in the fall so with that and uh, then the the next the last sheet 21 is kind of the roll up of all these this spreadsheet kind of takes everything that's in there and rolls it up and it, so you got the from left of what their initial CIP was what the inflation numbers are when you allocate it per building and per year and then you have uh, that bottom number rolls over so you see what the construction cost is what those line items are and the red are like I said not bid yet or we haven't firm numbered them and then then you'll see the change order amounts that come through and, uh, and then you'll what I'll show you and then I have that inflation if you looked at the inflation we we had to make up about three three point six million dollars on this you know for the overall program when we, when we laid it up so we knew we had to make that up somewhere and that's kind of a, who knows what that's going to be and we've more than made it up and if you look at right now we're at about 8.1 million on the program of what we've we bid or where we're at um, to date on this and if you want to look at right now we have very bottom I kind of plugged in some percentages we bid 67 percent of the bond so that doesn't include all the furniture and those numbers but what we bid so we're tracking about 6.3 percent below budget so those become big numbers when it's uh, it could go the other way too five percent below is a lot of money too so, so we're in pretty good shape and uh, that's kind of the report I have and any questions I'm certainly here to answer anything thank you for keeping it on task and you know all the planning that goes in before the grounds broken and all that helps to avoid those extra costs that we would see on change orders so we really appreciate that and um, I had one question on the on the Ben rifle on that 199 from the city mm -hmm. is that that security system like what we have no this? so that's that potential. will that still will probably will be okay. coming um, yeah, so that's not part of that. So we have to make sure that that exactly. that was um, the city changed their mind one week before we bid it mm -hmm. on how they were going to do the BMPs and the draining system, yeah. and so we had to redesign the whole thing. And we had not we had, wouldn't have started yeah. this year or hit the twenty one mark without us doing it. Yeah. And so um, on the city ordinance, is there a certain number of capacity that they have for the security system that we had to do at Jefferson High School or is it kind of a floating number that the fire department it's a it's a cost per square foot so that one will probably be if you if you say what how we estimated Jefferson it'll probably be about 180,000 now that only is if when we go in and test it that you don't have safety there might be parts of the building that we do have safety so we, have we don't know that until the the building is enclosed and then we go in and test the signal okay. so so that's that's kind of a floating target on both schools so and that's a requirement on, on a lot of new construction on here and other buildings are being asked to do the same thing I feel like I spend a lot of time in high school I asked this before, but I just want to verify it. When we're replacing the bleachers, there were those bells in Washington. Mm -hmm. Easier to access people. 
um, that is scheduled for. We're going to try to roll that in when we do that um, that weight room and the training room and that gym area. Okay. So we're going to try to do that because then we'll have rails. I mean, right now they don't have railings. Mm -hmm. They'll enhance that. We're going to lose seats because the new code has mm -hmm. these wide eyes. Um, um, but it is what it's going to yeah. be. Yeah. And that's scheduled for 2120. Is that, am I looking at that correct? Yeah, I believe so. If you. Look here. I'm guessing that's something you do in December. Yes, we'll, we'll coordinate. We'll coordinate so we can do that and uh, put that in and do it in Sunday. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, if you look at. Um, yeah, we're going to try to fund that in 21, 22, 22, 23. So not this coming budget year, but the following two budget years. So, so it'll probably be constructed right in the middle that summer between. Okay. And it'll go into the both budget years. So we'll be working in that spring. And we'll get to Uh, I just like to reiterate every time we talk about this, how the easy things to talk about for the bond or the new schools. Um, but when you look at this document and all of the schools that are being touched, again, we appreciate that community support for not just building new buildings, but for being able to enhance and upgrade, um, and make good safety measures and security and things to so many of our buildings across the district. So for all of us who are maybe paying a little bit more in our taxes, we're all getting something back, whether we're going to the new middle school or high school or not. There's so many different um, projects going on across the district that really are making the environments of our education that we're providing be better. So from a community perspective, I think we all appreciate that. Um, just want to remind people because I think it's easy to get lost and we're excited by the bright new brick and all the construction that's going on at some of those bigger projects. So you'll you probably see some some more projects coming up like at the public hearing. That's not on here. I didn't. I'm not changing what was done with the bond and that list. So I'm not adding things to it. So when you see something else and it's not on here, that's why. I'm just keeping that bond document separate. So I could do another color. Do it right now. Hey, Christmas Eve. Thank you Thank very you. much, John. I'll move on to school board committee reports. Um, Carly. I don't really have much to say. Um, we don't really have anything in the policy. Calendar doesn't meet until January. And the insurance. Mm -hmm. We met? We did not. Yeah. But I, I did covered not. for you. <laughs> I was there for you. Apparently, I did not meet. So I will let you cover that. Um, policy calendar, as Carly said, half we met talked about um, in terms of our schools, talked about a couple of safety areas, one um, Pettigrew, um, corners where you play with stuff, and then the speed zone for the Are we just going yep, down? Just go right so, okay. Down. Um, the Sioux Falls Public School Education Foundation met last night. Um, I'm really proud to report that our revenues exceeded our budget income projections by around $66,000. Uh, noteworthy events um, to that increase would be the $25,000 that was raised for our signature event last month, and that was primarily due to sponsorships. Um, and we hope to continue to increase um, ticket sales um, as we plan for next year's event. Um, we also had 19000 that was raised at the breakfast um, this fall. Uh, we also, our endowment balance, we have over $113,000. So that means that equates to about um, 12000 available for grants. Um, I do want to make mention that, and I mentioned this last time, that we got a $50,000 um, grant from Verizon. And those dollars are specific to STEM, um, STEM curriculum that the teachers would be interested in um, developing for the classroom. Uh, I also want to remind people to go out and test drive a car. 
if you test drive a car at Graham Automotive, you get to fill out a form and $20 will go to a teacher of your choice. So if you could remind uh, your school principals to get that information out to parents, and that will run through December 31st. Um, the Head Start Early Childhood Policy Council met. Um, last week, we were fortunate to hear the update on the preschool program, which really got rave reviews, and um, it's such a testament to the, the administration that makes that happen and the teachers day in and day out. Um, two weeks ago, I was part of the self-assessment um, review process for our annual um, federal grant dollars. Um, of that, um, really across the board, as far as school readiness, uh, the curriculum fidelity, that all um, met the standards needed to continue to receive the grants. We looked at health and safety, the vision, hearing, immunizations, that would live and expand the services, um, being attendance and um, family goal setting. Those we were also needing um, what was needed for those guidelines. Um, and I worked for the, we had talked to the, or, yeah, anyway, I knew you would be there, so we're good. We got that covered. Um, the insurance committee met. Um, we had a slight enrollment. Um, you know, increase, met life transitions going well. Year to date claims for medical and prescription, uh, we're at about 9.2 million net pay. The Hays projections were at 9.5 million. So it's it's great that claims are under what the projections look like for medical and prescription. And dental and vision claims, they were under projection as well. So, good report. That's it. Yeah. Um. We have nothing. The sports Authority has not met. Um, we did go last week to peer for ASBSD at the board meeting, and then Cynthia was a champion at the delegate assembly. Um, housing has not met. That's all I get. And budget. Okay. Um, Southeast Tech Council met November 19th. They have had great um, signups for their new certificates and programs in both construction, medical assisting, wireless infrastructure. The state tech board met yesterday. They appear they moved it to peer from Sioux Falls um, to do the budget because my governor known being the first one to do that at the same time. Uh, and so they're, they were, they're discussing some issues, including possible name change. The healthcare sector breakfast had over 100 participants. The horticultural technology and sports tour management also had 102 participants. And the next one is the legislative sector breakfast, December 17th at 7.30 at STI. Deb Owens, um, Dave Rosenberg, and myself are going to be on this for that one if you'd like to attend. Let's see. We added some new tech council members. And they're going to hold uh, a day in the life of a Southeast Tech student, and they have not set a date on that, but it'll be an interesting thing for community, for board members, kind of see what a tech student, what they go through to both register and how they prepare to get there. The chamber met November 20th. The um, last week and this week, the last two candidates have come in for interview to replace um, interim um, director uh, Dave Kukowska, so we should know soon who that will be the his replacement. The uh, Deborah Owen from the Advocacy and Legislative Platform is busy getting ready for a legislative session. And so December 10th at 7.30 in the morning, they're posting kind of what, this is what's going to possibly happen in the legislative session. And then December 12th is going to be a legislative chamber next year. It would be, it would be interesting in attending that. Sewer Empire Leadership Council met November 20th. Um, we had a presentation from Shelly Unruh from Housing, um, basically talking about how the mayor has asked the two boards to merge affordable housing in this to kind of use better resources and do that and get more partnerships going between them. And then we, uh, the, the census uh, people came in and spoke about the importance of having every person counted and it's over fifteen hundred dollars per person times ten years if that person's not counted in the census. So you know the school district is would be a natural partner to help maybe get the word out about the census and they're, they're really making it's a two page amount instead of this ten page document. So they really hit on that and that is important to us to count in those numbers as well. 
And then I'd be remiss not to, um, once again, the big announcement yesterday, the David and Christine Billion uh, gift to uh, the district for six, $600,000, um, $150,000 to the Promising Future Funds that Steve Hildebrand started, and $250,000 to the Hope Coalition. Thanks to Doug Morrison and Randall Beck helped start for preschool. Um, just an amazing gift for our community and for education in our community. Uh, Steve has also raised an additional $102,000 outside of that million dollar gift um, through different partnerships and so forth on his board. And um, Lowell, their gifts are almost funded. McGovern, we're still working with the principal to get those. And Hayward is our next elementary that we're focusing on as we're getting those gifts out. Motion to call the meeting. All those in favor signify to say no. Aye. Aye. Adjourned until STI at four.